Hello everyone and welcome to this video for Revised Coaching and our exclusive coaching group where we want to give you real materials to help you see real success even in the middle of your real life. And today we're going to talk about social media marketing. I know that everyone from a small business to a new business to even large businesses understand the importance of social media marketing. It is a growing uh, arena for us to be able to market our goods, our services, the products that we want to sell, and it's a great way for us to reach the clients that we want to create a community with and create conversation with on an ongoing basis. But there's a lot of mystery about how to really capitalize on social media marketing in a way that is right, in a way that's successful and professional, in a way that's manageable because it can really seem to take up a whole lot of our time. If you haven't already checked out one of our previous videos, we discussed some tech tools that can help us be successful in our business, and one of those was Buffer. Buffer, B-U-F-F-E-R, is a online service that allows you to uh, control your social media marketing. It allows you to post to multiple platforms uh, at the same time. You can schedule content so that you're not always having to jump on to Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest or Twitter to actually do those posts, um, which is really great because you can schedule a week's worth of content. You can even schedule a whole month's worth of content if you want to do that. It has some analytics as well that you're able to track some activity, uh, keep track of past posts that you've done, uh, as well as be able to, like I said, plan it for future posts and schedule out so if need be. But let's really talk about where to post. Um, there's a lot of misnomer on the fact that we need to get onto all social media platforms and be posting everywhere. And the reality of that is it's just not totally doable. Unless you've got a staff or you're hiring to an outsourced company to do social media marketing for you, it is very hard to be in all places at all times to reach all people. And I would imagine that your audience doesn't exist on all social media platforms. So the first question you need to ask yourself is, where's my audience? Are they on Facebook? Are they Instagram? Are they YouTubers? Are they Pinterest followers? Where are they at? And wherever they are, that's where you wanna be. So if you are following or excuse me, if you have followers who are college age students, you're gonna probably wanna do more Instagram and Snapchat. If you are teaching tutorials and how to's and giving really great instruction on how to make things or do things, Pinterest, YouTube is where you're gonna probably be. Um, if you want to write really great blogs that people can really dive into and, and really absorb and, and get good information out of, well, probably sharing those through fa Facebook or on Twitter, the links to those is probably pretty good. If you are a business and you service other businesses, then a LinkedIn platform is probably your best bet. But the real thing is for you to discover where your audience lives. And again, that's where you wanna be. If you don't know the answer to that question, try a couple things out. Test it, see, go onto those platforms and see what other content is there. See who's engaging, who's getting on and getting involved in those platforms. And a little bit of trial and error should help you come to a clear path of what platforms are best for you and suited for your audience. The other thing that you may want to consider are the platforms you're already on. If you already have a Facebook account, start there. If you already do a lot of Instagram posts, start there. If you already are on YouTube doing videos, then just amp that up a little bit. You gotta start where you're comfortable. You've gotta start with something you're familiar with and kind of make that your foundation point, your starting point and grow from there. More than likely, if it's a platform that you're already familiar with, you're more than likely to get on and get busy doing posts and getting content out there. So what do you post when you get on there? Well, that's a great question. And a lot of people do a lot of really great things when it comes to post, and there are some that don't do so great when it comes to post. The key is that you wanna post things that are valuable, that leverage you as an expert in your industry, and that provide value to your followers. So informational, valuable, heart-lifting, inspiring, uh, funny, things that kind of go along with whatever your mantra or mission is with your business. So for instance, for me, 
uh, when it comes to posting for our coaching group, I believe that real material, real tips, real tricks that work in real life is what I want to share. I've been a part of a whole lot of coaching groups that it's not always real. There's a lot of really great ideas, but it's not realistic for my lifestyle. So you won't see me post million dollar coaching ideas or million dollar coaches posts or blogs or content. You will see me grab little nuggets of truth that I feel like are inspiring and encouraging and help women realize that they're not alone in trying to run their life, have a job, run a business. So I try to keep my posts relevant to what my mission statement is. And then of course the things that I post are things about building a business. You won't find parenting tips in our Facebook group. You won't find fitness tips in our Facebook group. You won't find recipes or crafting ideas because it has nothing to do with what I am about. And the same thing goes for you. If you're all about health and fitness and healthy eating and, and really great lifestyle choices, the last thing you wanna do is promote things that do the opposite of that. If you're all about promoting marriage and love and family dynamics that are positive and uplifting, of course you're gonna post really great stuff about that and you're gonna avoid the negative, pulling people down, ripping families apart type of post. No Jerry Springer things are you posting on your group if that's what you're about. All those kinds of things that have to be in line with what it is that your mission statement and what your business is about. It doesn't always have to be you and what you are doing, but it has to be in line with what you are about. So be true to you and be true to what it is that you have to offer and the message that you're wanting to portray. The other thing that works really great for posting content is to actually work with uh, your audience to find what they like best. If they respond most to videos, then do a lot of videos. If they respond most to pictures or polls or blogs, whatever they seem to interact with the most, that's what you want to give them. That doesn't mean that you don't post all the other stuff too, but your most important content is delivered in the way that they respond the most. So if you're going to have a huge sale, and blogs are not what your clients respond to, you're not going to announce your big sale through a blog. You're gonna get on and do a Facebook Live video or record a quick video and post it to your channel. That's what they respond to, that's what you wanna give them. If they love memes and graphics and tutorials, then that's what you give them and you deliver your most important content, your most powerful content in the way that they respond to the most and at the time of day that they are most engaged. Which brings me to the next thing. When it comes to posting to your social media channels, you wanna be consistent. Most importantly, you wanna post the most important content at the time of the day that your audience is most engaged. So if you find that your followers are more involved, more responsive, and more engaged at night, guess when you're gonna post your big sale announcement, or your newest product release, or your biggest giveaway, or your latest content is going to be at that time of day in the evening. If they respond first thing in the morning, then that's when you're gonna repost your most relevant content. That doesn't mean you don't post throughout the rest of the day. You can still post cat pictures and funny videos and uplifting Bible verses and great graphics and memes, but your most important content you want to reserve for the time of the day where your audience is most engaged. And track this stuff. Most of the platforms that you can go on and create accounts for are free and they provide some sort of an analytic for you to go back and look and see how many likes or comments or shares or engagements you got on that post. Just take a piece of paper and start tracking that stuff down and you'll start to see a trend where most of your content gets the most engagement, most of it gets the most likes, what time of day, what kind of content, and you'll start to see what your audience most likes. That's what you wanna give them, more of that. And they will flock to your channel, flock to your page, flock to your group in order to get more of the awesome things that you already provide. Now here's some things to avoid. One, avoid sell, 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 sell types of post. I really like the 70-30 rule. 70-30, add that up, it's 100%. So 70% of the content you're gonna post is just free, valuable, insightful, great stuff. Videos, graphics, blogs, memes, how-tos, whatnot. 30% of the time you're going to actually do a hard sale. And what I mean by a hard sale, it's really not a hard sale at all. It's 
uh, I just posted seven of these really great fun videos or blogs or articles and the next three things I'm posting are about my latest book release that I want you to go to my website and check out or I want you to go download this next PDF that I'm giving away or I want you to go to my site and read this blog. It's all about me in that case. Yes, I'm delivering great content. Yes, they're gonna get great valuable information when they go get that information, but it's driving them to my site. And I don't want every post to be about that. It becomes, a, it becomes pushy, it becomes salesy, and that's what we wanna avoid. We want encouraging, empowering, inspiring posts that give value, that give information, that make people feel like they've gotten something great when they visit your post or your page or your channel. And we want to save the most important content for the time that our followers are most engaged on our channel. It's really that simple. And a lot of it is trial and error. You can't do it wrong unless your channel or your platform starts to be negative and destructive and nasty. I don't think any of you are bound for that track, but if you are, put on the brakes, back up, and start posting things that are more encouraging, more uplifting, more inspiring, and more valuable. When people know that they can come to you to get really great stuff, they keep coming to you over and over and over again. Look at your own activity on your own personal social media channels. What are the pages that you like most? Why do you like them the most? Why do you keep going back there? Why is that the page that you look forward to seeing or the person's Instagram channel you look most forward to seeing? What is it that has captivated you? More than likely, it's because you're getting something really valuable there, something that feeds your spirit, feeds your mind, and you're getting to know that person, like that person, trust that person, and see them as an expert in their industry. This is the exact same thing that you're wanting to do for yourself. So take note of the things that work on you, your customer, your client. If it works for you, more than likely, it's gonna work for your audience too. Tweak your message for the things that you're sharing and the content that you're wanting to provide, but take note of the things that really impact you the most. More than likely, you're your best test market and you'll start to see that there's a trend for the things that you wanna see on social media. Use that as a pattern to build your own social media channel. Get involved in other people's Facebook groups. If you're wanting to get good at doing a Facebook group, go be a part of some. If you're wanting to be more uh, active in Instagram stories, then go follow some Instagram people and watch their stories. If you're wanting to be better about YouTube and doing great YouTube channels and YouTube contents, guess what? The best way to do that is to go check other ones out and start to mimic the things that you find that work or the things that you like or the things that you respond to. Again, more than likely, your audience will respond to. Make sure today that you download the worksheet, the cheat sheet for today's video because there's lots more tips there as well as a way to create a plan for you to create content that works for you. Also in our exclusive coaching group, we provide a monthly calendar of tasks to do, something, one little bitty thing each day to help push, you, push your company forward. And three of the days out of the month, we spend writing content for our social media channels. 10 posts on one day, 10 posts on the second day, 10 posts on the third day, and guess what? You've got 30 days worth of content already. So let's start there. The biggest thing in being great in social media is just to get started in social media. Consistency is the key, knowing your audience, getting familiar with the platform, and never looking back. Good luck.